the Around the NFL podcast. Won't wear a lanyard. (laughs) Welcome to Around the NFL, the latest edition, deep in the offseason edition. I'm Dan Hansis, joined virtually by Greg Rosenthal. What's up, buddy? I mean, I'm just a little annoyed how much you're showing me up. You're, we haven't done the whole virtual setup in a while, which is nice, um, mm-hmm. especially because your setup, which already was a lot uh, more professional than mine, now has a neon sign that says Old Zeuser lit up in the background. I'm not sure how I feel about this, but I, I'm. Uh, it, it's taken me aback. I'm a little disappointed that Mark is not here right now. Mark, somewhere on vacation. What, maybe a vacation. Well, I don't know what's going on with Mark. We don't know. And hopefully he'll be back later this week. I think he just week. like saw the amount of days that we've each had off so far this <laughs> offseason. He counted them up and he's like, I need to even that I know, out. I know. I know. I knew that was coming, by the way. But that's fine. <laughs> but that's he good. deserves that's it, too. Absolutely. Um, the reason why I wish uh, he was here for the unveiling of my old Zeus or neon sign was he, he would just be disgusted by it. And I feel like that would have been, I would have gotten some mileage out of that. Um, This is a gift from my brother, Kevin Danger Hansis. He got it for me for, I think, Christmas. And at first I was a little sheepish about, should I put it in the background? Uh, It feels like maybe it's a little much, but maybe, (sighs) maybe at this point in my career, it's time to just completely, completely lean in to the persona and let that consume, (laughs) fully consume the man behind the persona. So that's where I'm at right now. This is, I'm going full WWE. (laughs) I am no longer Dan Hansis. I am now the old Zeuser uh, here to forward. I mean, we've been on this journey together for a while here. I remember early on in the podcast days, I would often call you out for when you would go third person. And then at some point I stopped even calling you out because there were so many different third person (laughs) nicknames you had made up for yourself. Well, you know, the old blue, what is it? The old blue eyes? The new old blue eyes. And that's a new with an umlaut. Um, so I think this, uh, I think Tugboat. this completes the circle. I like it. I, I mean, I kind of like like it and don't like it at the same time. So that's that's what you. I think that's what you want is a reaction. That's absolutely that's what, what I'm looking for as a person. And your background's fine. It's fine. It maybe could care. use we a little. We don't have to use it anymore. So that's nice. Yeah. It's maybe nice. could use a little 2022 sprucing for the new season if we do end up here doing certain shows. We still will be doing remote shows during the season. But even then, it's podcasts. If we're not on TV right. anymore from home, I'm done with it. You know, I'm phoning it in. Hey, I don't. Somebody should tell Greg that this is 2022. There's social media content. You're always on camera now, buddy. Right now, you're on camera. Yeah, but I, I, I always look like trash on uh, at our podcast. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I, um, I spent the weekend in Nashville with uh, my buddies from back east. I did not, as you can see, because I'm here. I did not get chappelled um, by a single Titans fan, which was nice. Uh, great city. <laughs> Had never been there before. Shout out to CJ. So many talented musicians down on Broadway there. He was certainly among them. Uh, and he's a big ATN fan, and he appeared uh, legitimately shocked to see me standing in the crowd like a big old bozo. Uh, and that, that's funny and perhaps understandable. Uh, we had a nice conversation. He had a theory why Mark does not deserve sandwiches for the Philly special. But once again, I got to keep Whoa. that chambered because Mark's not here. So, But that was great. Shout out to CJ, a longtime listener. Love Nashville. With the crowd of what? What kind of crowd? Um... What kind of crowd? You said he saw you in the crowd. What crowd? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, so if, if you're about. familiar at all with that main drag there in Nashville, there's bands that play literally morning to night through the night um, in every single establishment. And there's a, you know, it's a very crowded district. And uh, so I was in the crowd watching uh, CJ's band on um, Thursday night. And then gotcha. I ended up seeing him on he Friday as well. It was a, mm-hmm. it was a nice little thing, but uh, yeah, if you're a music lover, if you like good times, if you like, if you're our age now, Greg, where maybe you want it, not that you're like, Hey guys trip, that's not really a Greg Rosenthal thing. But like, if you went and you wanted to go to a city where you didn't feel like too old, like Nashville's perfect. It's got all ages, uh, you know, it's a great, great fun American party city. Uh, with a lot of history too so Wes, Wes and Keisha hit it up uh, on his uh, sandwiches tour he said unbelievable sandwiches in an unbelievable city I remember they were they were both in love with it 
And that was, yeah, that actually came to mind while I was walking uh, the streets of Nashville. This is right up Chris Wessling Alley. So that was nice. Uh, anything to report on your weekend before we move into today's show? No, we, we, we were hunkered down. Walker got COVID last week, although you couldn't really tell. But uh, oh. so, we're, so we're just hanging. Maybe I got it, too. How are you, really buddy? I, I'm OK. So we picked a good show. Me back from the yes. packed Nashville. You COVID in the house. Let's stay remote for the balance <laughs> of the week. Coming up on today's show. Big one. Very exciting um, for uh, the guests that we're going to have on today's show. Um, Greg, you have done um, Super Bowl coverage with this woman uh, who works with Sky Sports, works with the NFL, and now she's going to be joining us on today's show, Phoebe Schechter. That's good. She knows her stuff and she is going to add a lot of value for a, a very impressive, a very important, I should say, uh, draft we have coming up. That's all I'll say. You're, what, you're teasing the draft? I mean, it'll probably be in the title of the show if you want to just go check it out now. But I like that. Uh, I'm excited for this. This is like great off-season content. And yeah, Phoebe's uh, amazing. She she was so good on the Super Bowl coverage we did. Also was a staff member uh, under Sean McDermott, like a, a coaching intern there. So that's, that's oh, exciting. Works at dirt. Sky, Sky uh, with our, our friends there. So uh, it'll be great. Let's get some Sean McDermott. You know what I mean? <laughs> But before that, the news. Chilling on the seventh floor. I gotta let these chickens know the Greg is in the house and I'm finna make these. I'm a I'm a then I'm quick on the face on the stick between the come on fellas, that's the weird stick up in the ear. All I'm laughing at these guys are sitting all in the eyes. What that? Yes, of course. <laughs> Greg Olson and the seventh floor crew uh, from the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, we'll get to Greg in a little bit. And yes, maybe the bleeps made it difficult to understand the message of the song uh, that Greg and the rest of the seventh floor, cr- uh, f- seventh floor crew are trying to express. But that's for the best. This is a family show, Greg, at the end of the day. And also there's kids that could be listening in the car and the entire female race. The be- the beeps threw me off that I haven't heard that in maybe 10 years. And I totally forgot it ever existed. <laughs> and that's exactly what Greg Olson wants. All right, let's get <laughs> to the news. Start with the Cleveland Browns. They have kept an important defensive player in the building after Jadevian Clowney's 14th unsuccessful trip to free agency. He's decided to stick with the Browns, return to the team uh, on a one-year deal worth up to $11 million. So he'll start uh, next to Miles Garrett. Clowney and people that listen to the show know I've given Clowney a little bit of grief um, for not maybe being the guy that connects with how much we talk about Jadavian Clowney in terms of production. <laughs> uh, he's never had 10 sacks in a season, for instance, but I feel like he's had nine sacks in a season about six times now, including last year. So, Greg, a, a value add to keep him with the Browns and and uh, that defense should be able to make some noise this season. I mean, I'd like I'd like someone to say my trip to free agency was unsuccessful. If I could get, you know, eleven million dollars at the end of it, he's doing he's doing fine. Uh a, they needed him. They they probably expected this to happen the whole time. They have Chase Winovich right now as their third pass rusher, really, which I think is a nice role for him. I think could be a nice pickup. But when I was doing the projected starters at first and, like, I was slotting in Winovich as the starter and, like, no one really behind him, it was like, they better sign Jadevian Clowney. Ian, Ian reported that he turned down some multi-year offers worth 13 to $14 million a year. Uh, okay, sure. I'd like to see the guaranteed money on all that. Uh, Clowney got what he was going to... My guess is there's only eight or nine real million dollars in this and that some of it is incentives, and that makes sense. He was a good he was a good value at even a lower price last year for Cleveland. A quality starter for that money is great. I mean, ultimately, we get all excited about the draft. The odds are all these defensive ends that were drafted in the first round, the average one is going to have a worse season in 2022 than Jadevian Clowney. It's a, it's a, it's a big deal to, to go, go at a starter at this point in free agency. Yeah. And I would say all the drama around uh, the quarterback position aside, this is a roster that certainly um, if you add high level quarterback has a chance to compete for the AFC title. And uh 
you know, I, the next move I want to see for them is adding that wide receiver. There's still some names out there. I'm going to pound the table once more for Will Fuller. If you're going to bring Deshaun Watson to your team and everything that comes with it, why don't you bring the guy that he loved making plays with in Houston, basically uh, his entire career there, who's still out in the market, who will be very affordable as long as everything checks out behind the scenes. I don't know where Fuller's at, uh, big picture wise. Odell Beckham, of course, is still out there. He he talked his way out of Cleveland or his dad talked his way out of Cleveland because of Baker Mayfield. And yes, Baker Mayfield's a Brown, but he's not really a Brown. Let's see if one of those guys ends up on that team. Because if you had one more really um, uh, buzzy playmaker to this offense. Uh, yes, there's no denying that the Browns, if they do have the quarterback they want to have play the majority of the games, you can make a case that they have a chance to win the whole thing. That's, that's I think, the ceiling with this team, Oof. like it or not. Yeah, I think I don't think the roster is quite as good as it was two years ago, but I'm with you on Fuller would be a great idea. You, just get a professional like Julio Jones. I don't know what he wants financially. Just someone that can be there because right now you have Donovan Peoples Jones as your two and probably a rookie David Bell is your three like or or Anthony Schwartz from a year ago either way you just you need like one more pro that can just maybe two that can just catch 50 balls like I if you get 50 for 600 out of Julio Jones like that's probably better than the guys that are on their roster right now They, they and they probably will they have a enough cap space to do what they need to so you're looking for a bro who's a pro. That would work. Yeah. I mean, there there are guys out there. There's 17 guys in my top 101 still available. Uh, much more than a normal at this time of year. Who is the highest out of curiosity? Still available. Odell Beckham. Because I was kind of looking at him as like a long-term pickup that he would still make sense. Uh, Dwayne Brown, who still played at a pretty high level. Mm. Trey Flowers. Hakeem Hicks is out there. There's some decent stuff. JC Treader, who was a Brown last year and played pretty well. All right, let's move to the Washington Commanders who, you know, for years now, there's just always a lot of things hanging over this organization. And so much of that is connected to ownership uh, and Daniel Snyder and what's been going on behind the scenes there. There's just been scandals that have just marred the franchise. And USA Today's Jarrett Bell reports that NFL owners are, quote, counting votes on removing potentially uh, Snyder from his role, uh, the source is an anonymous NFL owner. So that is as high up on the chain as you can get. And there are 32 teams. Uh, you need to get 24 teams uh, to vote an owner out. I mean, that would be uh, unprecedented, Greg. You, do we, do we, has this happened? These, you know, these are billionaires, it's a billionaires boys club, and these guys tend to stick together, but Snyder has potentially made himself an outlier because of the latest controversy, which uh, stems from an ongoing investigation uh, that alleges the commanders cheated other teams out of ticket revenue, which should be shared amongst the franchises. That's a no, no. Right. Which would be crazy. If that's the thing that has, I mean, to, to review since, Daniel Snyder was removed from the day-to-day operations because of um, the workplace misconduct investigation that they had in, in terms of how poorly they've treated women, which is not, uh, he's been called to Congress for more in, investigation, more accusations, and this uh, report about him stealing money from like if he, if he can't get kicked out right now, no owner ever will. And the whole idea was like owners don't want to do this because it could potentially lead to the skeletons in their closet getting brought up. Um, but man, I would just feel better working for the NFL without Daniel Snyder in it. This isn't, this isn't a new thing. And the, the newsworthy part of this story to me is that someone's willing to go to USA today. This is like a very direct person that they're going to Jarrett Bell, who's a pro football hall of fame, you know, award winner in terms of the, the, the Walt, the Spinks award, the, the writer, like we're going to go to USA today. The one that still get dropped off in the hotel. We're putting this out there. Like that's a different step in the process. Um, and it makes me hopeful, but I've been hopeful about this before that, that there could be change. And in, in and terms of wrong. the history of this type of situation, Panthers I don't think it's owner. ever happened. Jerry Richardson walked away right. when he was feeling the pressure, but he, he there was no vote. Like he just Jerry left. Richardson, and that was coming in the wake of uh, the Donald Sterling uh, scandal involving the NBA uh, Clippers franchise, and he was forced to sell. Uh, so Richardson perhaps was trying to get ahead of that when he sold. Uh, but uh, beyond that, this is uncharted territory if it goes down this road. And I would imagine there will be lawyers, uh, and the yep. story will mushroom 
if the NFL owners ever banded together in the majority. Do it. Uh, on Washington. Do it, owners. Please. All right. In it, other news, you heard Greg Olson at the top of the news. He has since moved past his time as a Miami area rapper into a very successful <laughs> NFL career as a Pro Bowl tight end and then made the transition when his feet literally begged him to stop playing football uh, to the broadcast booth where he's been very good. He's a really good, rock-solid guy with, I think, potential to even be better than that. And even though Tom Brady is under contract for a mega deal with the Fox, uh, with Fox, once he uh, finally retires, Greg Olson will be the one calling the Super Bowl on Fox next February. Of course, our boy Andrew Marchand, who was on the show last week, had this first. Olson and Fox Sports have a deal in place that will make him Kevin Burkhardt's partner for Super Bowl 57 from Glendale. Um, so there you go. So if, at least in the short term, Burkhardt and Olson are the number one team. There's also a Drew Brees scenario out there, Greggy, because Brees in his weird cryptic text uh, tweet last week, let it be known that he he can go in a lot of different directions. And then, of course, we don't know how much longer Tom Brady's playing. I think this is it for him. But Marshawn threw a little cold water on that on our show last week. So there we go. As the NFL broadcasting booth turns well it would have been nice if marshawn gave us that scoop i mean i thought the same I, thing thought about it because he, he did mind. it the day before and he kind of hinted around at maybe he didn't have it then he, i'm sure he didn't actually because can know, i tell you good. something i yeah, thought please. during the conversation i saw it in his eyes i think he almost did it oh i think he almost did it and maybe maybe that's on us maybe if we just would have just just a little bit prodded a little bit more he would have given it to us uh, but ultimately we failed. So that's just the way it is. I mean, I think, he, you know, he's got um, his employers to keep happy. So I get that. Uh, he sort of hinted around at it. Um, and he, he hinted around at the idea that, like, I don't know if Tom Brady's going to take this job eventually, which I re- that was what I found most intriguing was like, OK, Tom Brady could play more like Tom Brady could change his mind. Um at Fox has got to move forward as if they don't know for sure when Tom Brady is coming. I, I think Olsen will be like, like you said, rock solid. I think, I think he's good. I think you can learn something from, him. I just don't want uh, an announcer like taking away from my experience. And I thought you, you could tell with Marshawn's report about breeze that like this, he was saying that this is going to be breeze's best chance to really get a foothold in the broadcasting business. And it almost felt like maybe that was well, coming from like the Fox side of things. It's like, they're not going to pay top dollar for Drew Brees necessarily be number two. Like if if he's going to hold them over a barrel and like want to be that dude and like want that special attention that a Drew Brees gets, it's like you got to put in your time, man. And and the the train might leave the station if you don't just take. I mean, yeah, I, that's why the whole thing st- was struck me as a little bit odd. Like you had Drew Brees doing Notre Dame games with Tarico, correct on Saturdays. Like, why not do that for three or four years and, and really, you know, learn the craft and, and get better? And if you don't, if you really don't want to do the um, studio NFL telecast, you don't have to. I mean, I'm sure you could work something out um, and just stay on top of the NFL game. And then when the time comes, maybe you get an opportunity. But, uh, you know. But good, good for uh, Greg Olson. That, that he'll, he'll I'm excited really for job. that. There won't be as much Fox like number one team in our lives without TNF. Now, you know, we were getting buck and aikman twice a week last year last mm-hmm. couple of years so that'll be a little different but we get them we get them some big spots i like it all right let's hold up right here we'll take a quick responsible break and be back with more news all right time now for roster news and notes presented by upwork where you can build the team that would build your business learn more at upwork.com oh nick nick Foles. On the move once again. What a journeyman. He's turned into a master journeyman, this Nick Foles, for a guy that had one of the great Super Bowl runs ever. Uh, He signs with the Colts, so formerly of the Bears, a two-year contract. It reunites uh, Foles with Frank Reich, who coached the Eagles offense during that famous Super Bowl run in 2018 by the Eagles. He's 33 years old. He will not... Um, be supplanting Matt Ryan as a starter unless Ryan gets hurt. Um, And he didn't do much last year, Greg, to make you think that going forward, there's a lot left in the tank. But I think it's a sensible move uh, by both sides. 
Yeah, they needed a backup quarterback badly. Uh, he did start one of the weirdest, more uh, memorable games for me. Like the mo- this this was like a reminder of like why I like football. Like his comeback um, in Seattle for the Bears was like a, <laughs> a totally bizarre, great uh, moment of the 2021 season for me. Like he let a two touchdown comeback in the fourth quarter where he made some throws. And I was like, what is happening here? It's like football can be entertaining in almost any scenario with like two totally dead teams. And Nick Foles is making wild plays to get a game winner. I've always believed Foles had a chance. Yeah, I feel like that happens. I feel like it happens (laughs) even more with kind of also ran teams that are a little off the radar and they're starting a guy that had the season worked out differently. Maybe they didn't want to start him, but that guy turns out to be a former star or a dude who really slinged it earlier in his career. I remember Vinny Testaverde had some of those type of games where he was kind of a far, forgotten guy. And then all of a sudden he'd be like, or boom, late period boomer Esaias. And I remember throwing for 500 yards for the Cardinals once late in his career. Like these guys pop up with those big type of games. Uh, but yeah, Matt, it's Matt Ryan's team. There's no b- doubt about it. And Foles now has transitioned into that, like Joe Flacco, that stage of his career. Uh, where you know where you are. You're not trying to be the guy anymore. You're just looking to collect some paychecks, be involved with the game as long as you can before it all goes away. Uh, Because time is finite, Greg, and everything, including for an NFL quarterback. Five five different uh, teams in seven years. So you're right about the the journeyman. That was News and Notes presented by Upwork, the world's work marketplace. Learn more at Upwork.com. Speaking of the Colts and quarterbacks and veterans and it not working out, Carson Wentz was one and done in Indy, despite the Colts giving up big draft assets to bring the former Eagles first round pick to the team last offseason. And um, it, it was always a very kind of unique NFL story just by how open the team was that was getting rid of the quarterback was about not, not wanting to be with that quarterback anymore. Uh, Ursay had told reporters uh, after Wentz was traded to the commanders for some draft picks. And Carson Wentz, by the way, in case you forgot, is a member of the commanders and he is ready to take charge. As we all know, decided to really go ahead and uh, start to take command. Oh, sorry. Come He's on. ready to, you know. Don't blow the line. That's why he had ready. to take, take it seven times. To start ready, getting ready to take him in. Anyway, Ursay told reporters it was very obvious the Colts had to move on from Wentz. And guess what? Carson Wentz now, he's having his say. He's like, what? 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 Yeah, that I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that things unfold the way they did. And, you know, I thought things were, were in a pretty good place there. I had awesome relationships with, with every single person in that building. Can't say enough good things about um, the people over there. And, um, yeah. Kind of came out of left field, you know. He's he's entitled to his own opinion, and you know he's entitled to do what he wants with his football team. That was from the Colin Cowherd podcast, and right the video clip we just played, which you can check out on YouTube, uh, right beneath um, Carson Wentz was just a big logo for Manscaped, and it just made me connect dots about Carson Wentz and how he's grooming himself, and that was unpleasant to me. I just want to <laughs> a little. I'm speaking. My, my thoughts out loud. I don't think you need to connect those dots. I don't think that's necessarily uh, the case there. I think, um, <laughs> I mean, he is a guy that likes to take command. So may, maybe you're right. I, you know what? I'm kind of with you. Maybe he's not somebody that uh, subscribes to that level of self-care. I, by the way, like he said, he has great, he had great relationships with everyone in that building. I'm, I'm sure that's what he believed, but um there's just an indication that not a, you know, relationships go two ways. And like, if someone disagrees with you about that, then like they're, they're right too. Yeah. Hey, sometimes I feel like with the Wentz stuff, um, there's a tendency to pile on him a little bit, even though there's not a lot of documented evidence that he's a bad guy or a bad teammate, but yeah, it is one of those reading between the lines. There's just a disconnect with him and his teams that he plays for, which is not great at the game's most important position. Moving on, the game's most important position, San Francisco 49ers. They fashion themselves like a big-time, top-level, top-tier Super Bowl contender in 2022, but they don't know who their quarterback is. That's kind of a weird territory to be in. George Kittle made the uh, media rounds uh, ahead of his tight end university thing he does, and he was on PFT Live with your old boss, Florio Greggy, and he's not even hiding it. Nobody's hiding it. He calls Garoppolo v. Lance a toss-up for him. Let's listen in mm. to what Kittle had to say. 
That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Uh, you know, that's one reason I'm glad I'm not the head coach of the 49ers. So that's all on coach Shanahan, you know, like, and I'll give you both ways. Like, you know, Jimmy G awesome in the huddle, great leader, directs guys, people are, you know, you know, go to attention when he's talking, he's got a quick release. He knows the offense, you know, like I said, been to an NFC championship game. So he knows what he's doing. Um, Trey Lance can run, extend plays, does all the play action stuff. Incredible. Could throw the ball 70 yards. So it's just, it, it, I don't know. It's a toss up for me. Oh man. Kittle is going to be definitely in the media game in a few years, by the way. Yeah. He had a better background than me too, which is a little disappointing. I, um, I don't know right now. <laughs> what are they going to say? What, what can he say? Kittle loves Jimmy G. It's one of the awkward positions that they're putting themselves into by keeping him on the roster. And yet the, the later we get into this, the more likely it is that they're just going to keep him on the roster. You know, maybe, maybe Carolina changes their mind or Seattle changes their mind. Seattle would be weird, but Carolina changes their mind at some point, but that's not going to be till mid August. So they got to play this thing out. And, and maybe uh, we should have seen this coming um, collectively when Garoppolo's season ended immediately followed by shoulder surgery on his throwing shoulder, which is a big deal. And, but we don't know exactly how much that truly played into drying up his market. I think you would, you would speculate. Yes. It probably had a big, big reason behind it. And probably the only reason why he didn't get traded. And yet, it is pretty stunning to me. Yeah, this is feels like it's the most likely scenario now that this is how their season uh, is going to the narrative around the season, at least heading towards training camp, is that they have these two guys in the building and Garoppolo might have a chance to hold off Trey Lance, which nobody was predicting uh, in January. I, ultimately, I don't think he's going to have much of a chance. He could also have another move here where he doesn't want to stay with the 49ers. But I, it probably wouldn't happen because he's making so much money and I think they're willing to pay him his salary, even if he's the backup. It's not too different from Jacoby Brissett um, when Andrew Luck came back a few years ago and had this huge salary and they just decided to keep him just in case Luck, Luck gets hurt. And it's, it's kind of similar. Like, he's not going to make that money elsewhere, so he's got to kind of be a good soldier about it. And I don't think he'd have much of a chance to win the week one job, but he'd just be there lurking all handsome, you know. In the mm, and I don't know, man. It feels a little more wide open to me <laughs> that Trey Lance is going to have to play well and this summer and through training yeah. camp and even an ex like we might have those those training camp usually those preseason games don't mean mean much but they might mean a little bit more for San Francisco we'll see we'll see finally in the news it's uh now where are we we're in the last week full week of May uh Bill Belichick has not revealed who will call plays for the Patriots in 2022 we know it won't be Josh McDaniels uh, who got a head coaching job. So it will be who, 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 who uh, he met with the media Belichick and he downplayed the importance of the role. And uh, he, you know, he just doesn't want to talk about it and he doesn't want you ask him about it. Why do you care so much? Let's listen to the hooded one. And if you're asking about game plans, we're months away from that. Months. Didn't get it. Not a word. Was it, were the, was that English? I heard grumble, 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 grumble. <laughs> Next question. Uh, to be fair, well, I don't know about to be fair, but this isn't new for him. But the the offensive side of it, of like not knowing who's calling plays, is a little new, especially with like a young uh, quarterback like Mac Jones. Like when McDaniels left, it was mysterious. Um, I think it was Dable was in there for a minute uh, back in the late aughts. Uh, you know, he st we still don't know who the defensive play caller is all of last year. Like we understood it was some combination of Steve Belichick and Gerard Mayo and Bill Belichick. But it's it's weird because now everyone's watching these little mini OTA practices and they're noticing Belichick doing some of the stuff. And as a Patriots fan who's like feeling a little bit like, you know, we're we're past the we're past the most exciting time of my Patriots fandom, no matter what. I mean, it's over. Um, like we just witnessed the greatest run in professional American professional sports history. I would argue like it's, it's on the downturn. You know what would get my juices going? I want Bill Belichick calling those plays. And then there's some thought maybe he's got to be the offensive play caller. Now that gets me a little more uh, intrigued. Yeah, he's back. I'm into he that. Yeah. I'm just happy you feel anything, Greg, about the Patriots or my other theory <laughs> is that this has all been an elaborate move by you to play down your Patriots fan. I'm like, I don't really care anymore to gain some um, analyst 
uh, pop. That's but the it's worst always theory deep that you have. That of course it's deep within. I'm going to care more about them than other teams, but it's not. It just can't get back to where it was. Like you gotta, you gotta just realize. Did you enjoy where it? You're at. Did you enjoy it as much as you should have now? Like yes. now that it's, it seems to be if, over. If you go by, if you go back and like listen to our, not that you ever would, but uh, I absolutely would. <laughs> the Give Patriots. Me some shows. Super Bowl championship when they beat the Seahawks and certainly the Falcons and Rams. I think all it was was like the, those whole run-ups was an appreciation of I, I all I wanted was that fourth one. You know, it was one more dot the I. Uh and I did. I did appreciate it. And now it's it's a new era with a with a mysterious play caller. But they've done this a million times. Like when Flores supposedly took over the defense, we didn't know who was calling plays like three or four years ago. They won a Super Bowl that way, actually, that that year. Like they, they this this is his thing. It's stupid, but he's been doing it for 20 years. Right. I guess the only way I feel like you would be concerned about this if, if, if Belichick was like 88 years old and you were worrying about his ability to really keep up with everything, but I don't have those concerns, even though he's um, the second oldest coach in the league. I, oh, I have a run- tiny bit of concern that there's only like four offensive coaches and two of them are Joe judge and Patricia and they're in charge of the right. offense. Like there's a little bit of concern. I'm not saying I'm and not we, there concerned. was a, uh, there was a report out there from uh, Bedard uh, up in Boston that there was some grumbles and concerns about where things were, the state of, uh, the Patriots right now, players concerned about the direction of the offensive coaching staff. Everybody should just calm down. I think it's going to be fine. But but you don't you know, want your I, players like concern. You don't want your players being put in this weird position of answering these questions. It's not the biggest concern, obviously. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised that like there's some offensive players that like wait what we don't know who the play caller is. Wait what well, jo- judge my po- and Patricia? <laughs> my point what? being like if if this was a report coming out of the Panthers camp. And I know yes. they're all set because they got their rock star offensive coordinator in the building. But uh, I would say, OK, Matt Rule doesn't have somebody in place that players are concerned. But this is literally Bill Belichick. And it's just like. I'm not concerned. It's like me. That's what's happening in the news. Before we get uh, take a break and then get to our guest, I want to debut a new um, offseason uh recurring segment greggy you know as wow, i go through surprise. as i go through uh my different process getting ready for each show sometimes i'll come across something on uh the world wide web and i'll say oh that will be a good little nug for the show so why not just house it within this realm in its own um its own little world i call this segment it came from the internet ah. <laughs> This one via the NFL subreddit, despite going three and 14 and having a quarterback on a rookie contract, the Jacksonville Jaguars have negative 18 million in cap space uh, in 2023. Okay. That is a surprising (laughs) nugget. That's it. That's all it is. Hit the music, Graver. It came from the internet. Ah. You know. Is that team being well? Yeah, Trent Balky, guy keeps a job. <laughs> Got to give him that. I mean, if I, you know, I love that Trent Balky knew he needed to get it done this year and just spent someone else's money. That's what I would do if I was about to be fired. That's always, too. yeah, that's the feeling you want to have as a fan base when, uh, when you're heading towards the summer. It's like, oh, the guy that knows he's going to get fired is just recklessly spending <laughs> in an effort to go, you know, seven and 10 this year. <laughs> All right, Zay, let's take a Zay break. Jones. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll bring on. The great Phoebe Schechter. Welcome back. Our next guest got a hell of a resume. Better than ours. A former coach on the Buffalo Bills where she was an offensive assistant a current Sky Sports pundit slash presenter. Depends what you want to call it. A former professional football player herself. And one hell of an analyst. Did I mention that? Yes, that falls under pundit slash presenter. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Phoebe Schechter. Welcome to Around the NFL. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, the music just makes everything better. So (laughs) I feel very honored. (laughs) Yes, we're happy to have you. And uh, Phoebe, like in terms of background, 
Um, let's start with the Bills side of things. Like, how did that come about? And what kind of experience was that working under Sean McDermott? Yeah, so I initially applied for the Bill Walsh Diversity Fellowship back in 2017, uh, and that was my first training camp. So I was with DBs my first year, and then I just kept hounding them all throughout the year uh, to have me back, and they asked me back the next year, so 2018, and it was a bit of a change of scene for me because I, I for the first time, was on offense, specifically with tight ends, um, with Coach Rob Boris, and it was it was definitely life changing for me in so many ways, but also I was Rob Boris's first ever intern in his 13 years in the league. Mm. So that within itself was its own challenge in terms of having to think five steps ahead of him. So I didn't make myself redundant essentially, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been amazing. And, and really being there from the beginning of coach McDermott's journey. I mean, I had an amazing rookie class. You've got Josh Allen, Tremaine Edmonds, Saran Neal, Tredavious White. I mean, the names wow. go on and on. So super fortunate to be around incredible people. Yeah, we did. Uh, Phoebe and I were part of the talk sport coverage for the Super Bowl uh, in the second half. And all I kept thinking, and I said this at one point, I was like, I should stop talking uh, because every time Phoebe Greg, makes you know like that a- doesn't work when you say that to yourself. <laughs> In the game, you know, it was good. It, 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 like, makes you shut up uh, as an analyst or whatever during the game. But I was like, I need to just, like, pop in a lot less because all the points that Phoebe uh, are, are is making on the broadcast were, like, so much better and so much more <laughs> analytical from, like, an X's and O's uh, standpoint than anything that I could say that I was like, the best thing I could do uh, was be quiet. And, and Phoebe's still playing. She's part of the uh, world championships coming Ooh. up for Great Britain. <laughs> She's on that team. We're on the training squad there. So that's that's exciting. That's that's a rare uh, feat for any of our guests. I don't think Neil Reynolds has is, is ever been on a training squad um, ready to, to I mean, battle. he's tried for out big, for dozens. Yeah. He just he <laughs> wants that validation, but he keeps on getting turned away. Yeah. Don't you know I'm the lead presenter for Sky Sports? <laughs> Doesn't work. I mean, your accent's spot on, really. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, all right, let's get into it. Yeah, we we teased it up top. We're going to do a kind of a fantasy draft. Uh, no, not kind of. A fantasy draft of wide receivers. We're in a golden era of wide receiver play, aren't we, Phoebe? Like the, It just feels like, in addition to all the veteran stars out there, every year now tends to bring a fresh superstar into the mix. And I don't mean just like a guy that has potential to be a superstar. I mean, a guy who by week three, you're like, oh, he's one of the top 10 receivers in the league. In your opinion, why do these guys now, you're Jamar Chases, you're Justin Jefferson's, you can name the guys year by year. Uh, I remember Odell Beckham early in this podcast history, immediately came back from a hamstring injury and was like, oh, this is the most gifted playmaker in football. Uh, why is it that some of these wide receivers just have that ability to immediately become superstars? You know, I think there's a couple different things. I think one, we have a lot more multi-sport athletes and that changes the game completely. Um, you know, just taking those different traits and skill sets from other sports that they've played growing up. And I think the other thing is actually as youth have been growing up, there's been a bigger move away from contact for kids. And there's been a lot more of seven on seven, essentially. Mm. And that's a, essentially just quarterback, receiver, and, and you know, DB play. And for me, I think that's almost made the biggest difference. You know, you're looking at your Mahomes and um, your Herberts, guys like that who've grown up playing seven on seven. I mean, imagine having Pascal every single week since you were 10 years old. It, indefinitely, you're going to learn how to read a defense and be able to react. And I mean, and no doubt that's not to take away from the unbelievable athleticism that we are seem to be growing in this world. <laughs> right. Like you, I know you, you work with, with flag football. I know you're like traveling around, like helping to, to big build, you know, women playing flag football and, and, and boys playing flag football is like a big thing. And I, I think that's a huge part of it. And that's like, now that's where the money is and the way the NFL teams, Dan, I think are being built. Like now, I think you really saw it. And Wes was early on this, that the Kyle Shanahan Falcons were like a, game changing team because I felt like he knew you needed four wide receivers. And I feel like now now when I look at 
receiver groups, I'll, I'll even like see where there's two great ones or even three good ones and a big drop off. Like that's too thin. Now you kind of need four or five. Like you just need a ton. And that's like for this exercise, putting this list together, it's crazy. So many people, like you said, like you put, Oh, they're a top 10 receiver. Oh, they're a top 15 receiver. All right, go make that list because the top 20 at the very least top 25, like you're going to have to start eliminating some really big names uh, pretty early in that. So let's do some roster building then, because we don't want to be too straightforward and just uh, if we're, let's say we're built, what do we want to do? Like five each. All right. So if you're building out five here um, and the three of us will each put together a team and let's have some fun with it. Uh, let's uh, grave digger. Once uh, we have the teams together, why don't we, uh, vote and we'll have the open it up to the Instagram um, subscribers over there mm. um, at the ATN podcast and have them vote on what the best wide receiver group is. I feel like I'm definitely going to win. I just I feel like this. That's a <laughs> foregone conclusion. But whoever comes in second place is going to be an interesting uh, competition there. Um, so we're, let's make it a competition. Love that with a sandwich on the line. Uh, and if uh, and Phoebe, if you are the victor, we'll just have Neil buy you a sandwich. That will work. Um, you know, we'll have I'm Sky a little Sports worried about competing over. against Phoebe here, though. She took that like McDermott, you know, time training here and was like the first guest ever to be actually on and ready, like before we even started the show, like 30 <laughs> minutes early. So she's she's ready that's, to take that's us That's troubling. Uh, that did rock my confidence a little bit. Uh, but also let's instead of uh, just straight picking receivers, let's build a room. OK, yes. so that means you're going to want complimentary. Your, you want your one a guy. You're going to want your second banana, you're going to want a slot guy um, and you're going to want to balance out the room and get to a good spot. So uh, just know there's one other, there's just one other little niche to this exercise. You got to be ready for. You'll be hit at some point with a special category when you hear that heart. And that will, at the very least, and I'll leave it at this, narrow down your options when you get to make a pick. And I don't know, you don't know when it's going to hit, but it will. Mm. And you'll hear what the mystery topic that is drawn. I will be drawing it at uh, random. I don't know what it will be. Well, the, the key is though that Dan knows about this whole idea and created the category. So that's that's the key thing you need that, to know about. That's not important. That's all you need to know is that there is a mystery, <laughs> mystery category and it could hit you at any time. So let's get going. Phoebe, you are the guest. And I, I guess build out your roster however you want, but it is at the end of a, the day a draft. And um, right, we got to do snake draft to make this fair here. So yeah, back and I, forth, back and I forth. I would. All right, so let's go. Since I whatever, Greg. If since I know the mystery categories, I will pick last. Unless you want to pick last, no. I'll give you the option. They're all fine. You'll get three and four, so that's good. All that's right. Good. So then, Greg, Phoebe gets back to there, 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 there. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, This is eight, very serious. Food is one, on the line, four. so I, I hope you guys understand the realness of this competition. <laughs> it's, it's real now. All right, so one, two, three, four. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, here we go. Phoebe, you got the first pick. I would imagine you want to take a 1A receiver. Uh, you're not going to pick like a slot guy. You want to grab someone that's uh, top of the line, but you know what? That's your call. You build your team, your wide receiver room, however you want. You're up first. I am. I am actually going to go first with Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why Tyreek? I you know what? He can stretch the field. He's got the speed. You have to literally game plan against him. So I'm already going to make that defensive coordinator have to think the way that we, he tracks the ball and he's able to keep that speed. I mean, he is a, a no brainer to have on your offense. Mm, not for the Chiefs, though. You know, he not for the Chiefs. <laughs> traded this offseason. Um, not that that was like a red flag, but it was like just like the slightest shading of red mm. to me. That that big red Andy Reid was willing to to give him up. He's like unique. Like you, your offense obviously would be run so well, Phoebe. You would know just how to use him. You give him to some some dolts uh, that are running offenses. Like I don't. You you have to have the right person for Tyreek. I think Mike McDaniel is that person too. I, I I know what you're saying about that and their decision they made. But when you give your quarterback a half a billion dollar contract, it's going to lead to some tough decisions All if you right, want to actually right. have a real roster a uh, well-rounded roster so they were i think maybe in a tough position uh but he, uh he, he would have been much lower on my list i'm taking Devonte adams uh <laughs> with uh my pick here just feels like he's gonna get it. i'm looking at this for this year we're building the room for this year basically and uh 
you just know, I think his numbers might go down in the Ra- with the Raiders, but that's not what we're talking about. This isn't like fantasy stats. He can just do everything. You talked about like building the different room. I'm going to be looking at guys that can fit in every every spot, and Devontae Adams can do everything. He can he can help your pass protection because he can get open so quickly that your that your quarterback just needs to get rid of the ball. Uh, Derek Carr is good at that, by the way. So I I feel like he it's not an easy two pick. There's a couple other guys, uh, but I'm I'm going Devontae. He's Can't go wrong. Yeah. Can't go wrong there. PFF, a good stat they had that um, he had 96.1% of his catchable targets uh, for receptions, um, second highest in the league. So if you put it on him, he's going to catch the ball. You put it near him, he's going to catch the ball. And and Derek Carr, while not Aaron Rodgers, uh, certainly as an accurate thrower of the football. Do we? So just to make this totally clear, so mm-hmm. we're looking at like n- not so much a resume or – just 22 looking 2022 20, looking ahead how do we see this i'm, I know I'm we're in looking the middle of the building draft my now. room for this year like a generic team which team yeah. which room i want yeah all right uh that now goes all right so we got terry kill off the board we got Devante. i expected that to play out so very it works out great for the old zeus or i'll take cooper cup off the board uh from the rams just an absolute production machine Last year, one of the best seasons ever by a wide receiver in 2021. And then you're going to say, oh, yeah, but this is 2022. I don't have any concerns. Uh, I don't know if the Rams are going to run it back, but I know uh, Cooper Cup's going to be targeted like mad in that offense. I still think Matthew Stafford has big time years left in him. So even if he doesn't hit that same level um, in 2022, I think he'll be an absolute monster. And then it's going to snake to me. And now it's getting tough. I love Debo, but I just don't know. Here's the thing about Debo. I don't want to bring it up. He'll come up soon enough, but I'm going to pass on him. And then it becomes just like we were talking about. Should I go with the sensation from 2021 or the sensation from 2020? And I'll go with the 21 sensation. Jamar Chase will be my second player. I want that guy talked about Odell Beckham and what he did when he tore the league apart in 2013. Um, I believe it was, or 2014. Chase did that last year. I think he's just getting warmed up and he's teamed with a great quarterback that's uh, ascended as well. So Cup and Chase, hello, Dolly. <laughs> They're kind of similar in some ways to me because like, I don't know how exactly how Jamar Chase is so good at getting open. It's not just pure speed. It's not just pure strength. It's similar with Cup. Uh, that I think he has an even higher ceiling, but how how much higher could you get? Phoebe, we were... You know, that fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, how much more can you do than basically put it on one receiver's back with absolutely no one else on the field for the Rams at that time? Like the whole idea of like, oh, Cup's a system guy or he's a slot guy or he's this or that. Like he put that to bed in the most like emphatic way you could possibly do it. Massively. I mean, he was he was that fourth quarter. He was he was pretty much the only reason the Rams. I mean, obviously Aaron Donald doing his thing, but that offense was able to do anything. And and he made that fourth quarter so exciting to watch. All right, Greg, you now make your second pick in the second round of the fantasy draft. Do I hear a harp? No, I don't. The, you have a clear runway. No, I mean, this this guy, I debated having either two or three on my board. So I think Stefan Diggs is like an absolute steal here. And this is sort of like to mm, my... Phoebe to what, doesn't like it. She's mad. You took yeah. it. Take my dudes for. <laughs> I mean, I want guys that can do everything. Like that's... Then you don't have to worry about where you're playing. Like Stefan Diggs can line up inside. He can line up outside. He can take the short routes and go along with them. He can run the medium routes. He can go deep for you. He can do everything. I... I I love seeing his numbers pop up in 2020, um, but I felt like that was just confirming what he showed on on film in Minnesota, that he is like as complete as any receiver. I, I think there would have been an argument to take him number one overall. He's kind of like the last guy of these five, and these would have been the five that I would have had, that you could have made the argument to take any one of these five number one. I'll, the only quibble I'll have with this is that he was outrageous in 2020 2021 still an absolute stud but maybe came down a little bit in the second half especially you there was kind of a downturn a little bit in his production and now brian dable's out the door we don't know how this, this offense is going to look but these are minor quibbles ultimately i think it's a safe choice for sure yeah and you still have josh allen throwing him the ball so i like think why were you right. mad that it, why were you mad i took him 
Oh, no, I, I totally agree. I would have, I had him on my list. So mm-hmm. I, I definitely agree. I think he's unbelievable and he's great effort. I mean, he doesn't, he's like a little energizer bunny out there. So no, I mean, and the fact that he's proven he's done it in Minnesota, he's done it in Buffalo. It's not like a guy we don't know who can't handle that workload. All right. Oh, now, Phoebe, you're up. This is tough, man. All right. <clears throat> so two picks, I yeah. get my two, right? Yeah. Cool. I'm going to go. I, so I'm not going to lie. I had Devonta Adams on my list as well, but I'm going to replace him with DeAndre Hopkins, a guy mm, who we didn't see much of last year, but I think this year could really make an appearance again. Um, you know, we've seen him throughout the years, just the way that he goes after a contested ball. He's a big body, great hands. Again, similar traits to Adams in terms of winning that one-on-one physical, great release, kind of what you want to have as a, a nice compliment to Tyreek Hill in my offense. My next one. Well, wait, go, wait a oh, second. Oh, just kidding. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that heart means you need to get ready for the Something. mystery category. <laughs> Your next pick has to be a player who plays for a bird team, a player that plays for a bird team, Justin Graver, the grave digger, please let Phoebe know any explanations or suggestions that are necessary. Right. So the five bird teams are the Seahawks, the Ravens, the Falcons, the Eagles, and the Cardinals. Perfect. Uh, so your options include players like AJ. Yeah, Brown, we, we could DJ figure it out. I already got Kenneth. one. I we already got figure one. It out. I mean, <laughs> it would have been nice if you had given her the bird team before she took Nuke. Um, almost feels <laughs> like tough, that was intentional. Tough sitch. Yeah. So it almost feels like that was intentional. Thanks, guys. <laughs> it's randomized. So. Mm, mm, very, it feels very random. <laughs> <laughs> Selectively random. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm going to go for, had him over here in London this year, Kyle Pitts. He is technically Whoa. a tight end. Whoa, Whoa. wait a second. Love this. Technically, <laughs> but he plays more snaps at receiver. I yeah. mean, he, it, I saw a stat. He was like the most effective outside receiver per route in the entire league. So, and he played more outside than, than inside. So I think, I think we got to allow it. I think we got to allow it. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, again, like just watching him, he is the way that he tracks a football and his body control, some of the catches that he's been making, uh, I mean, a, a massive mismatch for any defense out there. I, I just love the way he creates separation. He gets after it. He's young, so he's only going to get better. And uh, for me, yeah. that's my bird man. <laughs> you know, I'll give it. I'll give it to you because listen, you get the whole Hopkins thing. I was tough with the Cardinals bird team, uh, mm-hmm. but he is a tight end. I know what you're saying. Is but he the though? Falcons label him a tight end. <laughs> That, but like, I, mean, I, I like you wanted to spice it up. Um, I didn't see that coming. That's off the board. I mean, he's more of a wide receiver, like plain wide you. receiver than Debo Samuel. It's not even close. I mean, <clears throat> or Jalen Waddle or Tyree kill in some way. Like he, I don't know. I, I like it. And um, I like that you threw us off base there. Plus you left all, all the right. wide receivers for us. All right. How about <laughs> yeah, this? Uh, wait, I think I hear Greg's up and I think I hear the harp again. Wow. Oh, no. Jeez. And this is this is gonna annoy Greg because he's he thinks he's building this masterpiece squad and now he has to contend with this. He's like <laughs> if Mark was here, he would be annoyed that you've been putting it on us and not yourself. But I see what's going on. <laughs> uh you have to um select a player who has won an SB. What? This is the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. No, All you right, have wait, to need, select a player Graver. who has a Super Bowl ring. That's even worse. Oh, sorry. Pretty short list now that Dan took Cooper Cup and Tyreek Hill's gone. But, you know, you got that whole Bucks team, Mike Evans and Odell Beckham last year. Mm. Tough timing. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm looking at my list. The next 10 players have not won a uh, have not won a Super Bowl right. trophy. We I'll, need show to put you, some... I'll show you mercy. And it, it also does include players who have won an ESPY. Well, tell me who's won an ESPY. I don't know. Does Justin know? He doesn't either. Nobody knows. Even ESPN doesn't know. <laughs> I'm like Googling, uh, has uh, someone won an ESPY? Probably not. Uh, this is ridiculous. Um, but you, you forced me. Well, now, now I'm going to just throw out um, maybe injury concerns too and just think like, 
think, you know, if, if you're going to go new Hopkins, who's suspended, you know, for the beginning of the year, and I'm just thinking like when they're healthy and everyone's right and he needs to have a, a Super Bowl trophy, then Chris Godwin would actually be my next guy up. I think Chris Godwin is like so underrated and especially with the, these two, I got Devante and Diggs. Um, I like Godwin inside more than them. Certainly um, you can use him in any way you want, um, but you put me in a tough spot. Like I said, the next, the next 10 guys, and, you know, you could have, you could have gone Mike Evans, but I actually would rather have Chris Godwin's. I think he's more valuable than, than Mike Evans. All right. Fair You're enough. Me hard. Sorry about that. I'm sorry about that, but that's a great pick. I think he adds a lot of value to your room. I do too. It's a nice looking room. I mean, I wouldn't have taken him in the third round here, but uh, mm-hmm. all right. All right. That now goes to the old Zeuser. And Justin, you could hit me with the harp anytime you want. And you could pick the category that I get hit with. How about that? Okay, Justin, hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep it fair here. Let's go with a player whose name has a repeating letter, which is actually a much longer list than I would have thought putting this together. Dan, you have two already in Cooper Cup and Jamar Chase. Oh, wow. Uh, that leaves you with Justin Jefferson, Debo Samuel. It's almost like Dan Lamb. fed you that this BS category was next because like <laughs> the next two players on my list would have that. It's like hmm. pretty much every player left on my list has that almost. Man, that's that's tough. Yeah. And to be clear, a repeating letter is like back to back in their name. Not like they have two A's, but like actually. Yeah, I get it. But even then, <laughs> even then, almost that's true for every player. Okay. It, my goal was to make you angry, Greg, and I've succeeded. <laughs> well, more just because you're like, oh, Justin can pick the category. And I know how this works. Justin did not pick the category. Justin has no control. <laughs> Justin? I did. Yeah, I did. He said, you can pick the category. Well, you picked a dumb category then. Yeah. You picked it. I'm well, mad at you too. There were only two left, so I didn't okay. really have a lot to choose okay. from. So now what, what we're saying here is... Wait, there's two more categories left, which means that it's probably going to be Greg and I with the yeah, last two categories. Go. All right, just just you make guys your got picks. your categories. Your it was one make each. Your you're you're in the clear now. I will <laughs> I will go with um, Justin Jefferson, and I will also go with. Hey, listen, I'll double it up. I'll go with. Uh, let's go to let's go. A guy kind of fell off the radar a little bit. CD Lamb. Okay. Um, okay. I like him because. One thing I like about Lamb is how he's versatile. Like my uh, my offensive coordinator, whoever that may be, maybe Bill Belichick can help me out with that as well. Uh, Lamb is a guy that can play inside or outside. He's done a lot of it. He's been a dominating player. Um, last year wasn't as maybe impressive in, as his first year was in some ways, but I think the best – of C.D. Lamb is yet to come. I think he's a Mm. superstar. Uh, I wouldn't put him in my superstar club uh, on NFL.com just yet, or maybe I would. I don't know. I have to think about it, but I think he has that, he has that window or that uh, ability and could get on that level. And yeah, I didn't think Jefferson would still be around. um, Well, he wouldn't, he he wouldn't have been if I had been allowed to pick probably. Oh, 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 sorry about that. So Jefferson (laughs) and Lamb are my selections. Why, why do you like Lamb so much? Phoebe. I like him. You know, I really liked him coming out of training camp last year. I thought that I, I loved watching his physicality, aggressiveness, the way he got after the ball and the way he just gets after in practice in general. Um, and then there were times throughout the season I wanted to see him peak a bit more, uh, especially with with having such you know great percentages in training camp but I do I really like I really like CD Lamb mm. and I think that he's got still has a lot of potential. Yeah, I like that you brought up like his physicality. And then he's uh, a guy I think could be used more creatively. Like that's not the first thing that you think of is like play strength with him, but he absolutely has it. He's so fat. Like his ceiling should be higher than Debo Samuel, who's my next pick and could be used in a similar way. I don't know if Mike McCarthy, um, if I trust him to to use CeeDee Lamb in that way, but I do trust Kyle Shanahan. So I'm excited to have Debo who like, you know, I can like, I don't know what we're doing with this room, but I want to get all these receivers on the field as much as possible maybe i'll go uh four wide or something or maybe i have three receivers and debo's you know offset in the backfield like sign me up i'm I'm surprised you let him sit there uh dan i think that's where you made a big mistake 
I I see what you're saying. I like Debo. I think I did put a little bit into his the uncertainty going on. We're we're assuming that he's even going to be uh, on the 49ers, which I guess he is. We, but, well, but. he would show up to my team. I mean, he would be excited to play under <laughs> my ownership, um, and we would pay him what he deserves. Right. And would you would you uh, cater the playbook how he wants to be used, not how what would be best for the team? Because I think that's been part of the storyline around him as well. If he gets his money, then he'll be he'll be happy. However, we use him. It is it is something to think about that, like all these guys are going to have a lot of mouths to feed, but I'm still taking the best players. What am I going to do here? Take Corderell Patterson? I guess that'd be an option uh, as like my fifth. But come on. Yeah, that would be an interesting move. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a great pick, especially at this part point in the draft. Is he uh, going to be able to continue to, to take the uh, abuse as well? Probably, but you never know. It's football. Yeah, thick skin. He'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. All right, Phoebe, you got two more picks. My last mm. two. Oh, my goodness. All right. I'm going to go for Keenan Allen. Mm. I really like him as a slot guy. Uh, you know, he's pretty big for being a slot guy. The way that he is able to read a defense and he can sit right in those zones. He can still fight for the ball if, if it stays in man like that. And, and also, like, more majorly is his yards after catch. He's a guy that can actually big body the football and then continue to get that that yak. So for me, like, that combined with his quickness, I think he's got to be my fourth pick. Um, any complaints on that? We okay? <laughs> no, I think that's good. I think it's okay. a little, a little older. Maybe not as explosive as some of the guys left, but um, yeah, he's, I, he's, yeah. That would be my only take. That is, he might be the first guy. We're, I don't know. See, you know, he's he's only thirty. Actually, I thought he was a little bit older. So yeah, I'm I'm thinking that uh, he has, and he's obviously connected with a great quarterback. But if I had to pick uh, two guys that I would be a little concerned with some age-related decline, Hopkins would have been the other guy. So you're banking on like the veterans having a couple Sean more. Sean McVeighing this. Mm-hmm. Got it. <laughs> we're we're going to win the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> Got it. In it to win it. F them draft picks. I like it. F them draft right. picks. Exactly. And then you close out your draft with. <sighs> this one was tougher because most of my picks that I actually liked are gone. Um, so I'm going to go for. T Higgins. Wow. Ooh-wee. Yeah. Closing out a little, a little Bengals guy. I, again, someone who I think, I mean, he did a great job with the Bengals and I think considering, you know, he wasn't really looked at because they had so many other great players, but this year going into it, I think having another year under his belt, I just think he can really do a lot for adding to my offense with the other receivers I've gotten here. I think he could, he could do some damage for me. I, lo- I love that. I wrote him down too in my top 15 thinking like maybe I'm not going to get to there, but I feel like he's so underrated. Uh, like if you look at his stats last year, if you count the playoffs because he missed some of the regular season, he ended up with 1,400 yards and eight touchdowns in 18 games. So like what one more than – like he – I still – people think I think sleep a little bit on what he can do and he can be a little more complimentary, which I, I think maybe works. You have a bunch of ones. Maybe it's good to have a guy like that. That said – you left a lot of good players on the board. So I did. One of these players, at the very least, isn't getting drafted. A.J. Brown, Terry McLaurin, D.K. Metcalf. Um, I mean, we didn't even get to like a Michael Thomas or Mari Ra- Cooper. There, there's a lot going on here. Jalen Waddell. Um, you you put me in a tough spot because I've got Brown and McLaurin well ahead of the pack. And D.K., actually, that's not true. Not well ahead. But I'm just thinking of, of my team. I want guys who can do everything. I'm actually going to take Terry McLaurin, even though I know the, the yes. Instagram voters would probably be more excited <laughs> if I took A.J. Brown. And that is just like a beastly crew. But I'm going to be true to myself and not just uh, pander for votes. So just keep that in mind. I, I love Terry McLaurin. Uh, I think if you put Terry McLaurin in a situation that was more healthy the last few years, for instance, let's say he was on the Titans like like A.J. Brown, I think he would have absolutely similar production. And again, what, I, what I'm looking for is guys that can do everything. A.J. Brown is amazing. I have somewhat of a similar player uh, in Debo Samuel already uh, on the roster. And instead, I want like movable guys for the rest of my, my receiver group. So as just filling out, I had AJ Brown ranked a little higher, but I think McLaurin fits better with my crew. Now I'm filling it's it cool out. cool because McLaurin. like you're saying uh, McLaurin, not always in the best spot to perform, but now he has Carson Wentz. So you're right. Like this is, 
This is time to But I'm not shine. picking fantasy stats for this year. I'm picking who do I want on my team. I think McLaurin would be looked at the same as like a Debo and an A.J. Brown if he had been in, in a different situation. So in this realm, he's playing for a fictional Rosenthal team with a fictional quarterback. Are you the quarterback? Take me through the the logic exercise. I mean, we're we're just picking we're picking teams. We're picking teams that of a team we would run. I'm no, I'm not the quarterback. I think I would have maybe Mac Jones thrown to him. Let's have Mac. You know. <laughs> a very bog standard. Yeah, like a middle then. of the pack. Yeah, just very. <laughs> um, all right, so you went with Scary Terry, which takes us to the final pick. And you know what? Uh, I don't know. Maybe this will. This will make Grave Digger happy since he's no longer a member of the save team. But I am going to pass on AJ Brown. Wow. Because I'm looking at my room again. We're building out a room. And the one thing I'm missing right now, I got Cups, Cup, Chase, Jefferson, CD Lamb. I want like a real, a big guy, a guy that could just abuse uh, cornerbacks just with his size and physicality and winning at the catch point. And that's DK Metcalf for me. Um, 6'3", a Greek god uh, in terms of his build and physique. He's a freak with the speed. So I think we've already got an imposing group. Uh, you put in a, a big man uh, with speed like Metcalf uh, to round out the group with the 15th overall pick. I just don't imagine how anyone ever stops this team uh, with these wide receivers. I mean, I mean, yeah, if this was, any, was a real team, we would all, yeah, the rest of the NFL would be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, just the three of us competing against each other. <laughs> it would be fun to watch, though. Um, it is wild. It is wild, though, that AJ Brown, for instance, uh, didn't get a uh, didn't get take because what you were looking for that's AJ Brown too, but that's also DK. Well, Metcalf. he's six one. I, I I wanted somebody that was just a real right. You know, a giant, a a twin tower is. Uh, as they say, I, I he can, think uh, he can he's beast you. I wish he was on my team. Like you, you hit me with the surprise category and otherwise Godwin would be gone, but it's just, it is crazy how deep, like how many players we didn't even get to in the top 15. Yeah. There's who else so was left good. out? Who are some of your really favorites angry? Phoebe that you didn't get to take here? I mean, I think, gosh, again, I really like, I know he's an older dude, but Mike Evans, I really like him. Amari Cooper, um, Jalen Waddle. I mean, there's so many, talented receivers it's kind of insane it, it's kind of scary to think how many are coming through and you can understand why corners and, and safeties are becoming such a big deal in the nfl when you have to compete with guys like this you what what's your you you kind of what's your specialty when would you say as a like what position do you play so i actually play uh like nickel essentially when i play but when i was with buffalo i was with tight ends so mm. For me, I had Charles Clay, who's amazing at the top of his route. Uh, you've got Dawson Knox, who, who's just been incredible for Josh Allen. Uh, so you just appreciate the athleticism of these guys. And yeah, I mean, I remember we had, <laughs> this is my little antidote for the day in terms of we had to do these, <laughs> we had to do basically like Pascal. So I'd go with the tight ends down to Pascal and Coach Boris would take them in the run uh, install. And I remember, you know, we're going to run this route called a crossbow. So I know what it is. I've told Dawson what to run in this situation. I basically in the middle of field safety, Dawson runs at me like he's running like across the field and then he plants his foot and he, he breaks it back out to the same way he's coming. This is media day just to add injury to mm. insult to injury. So we're out there. I'm stood there like flat footed in the middle of the field. He comes at me. I know where he's going. I fell so fast on my face. My feet mm. just went dead laying there feeling super unathletic hmm. and D Dawson catches it. It was, it was beautiful. <laughs> that That's the thing. Like I, I like look at these guys too. Like so many of them are almost uncoverable that we didn't even talk about Devonte Smith, like Deontay Johnson who gets open quickly, DJ Moore, Jerry Judy. We didn't get OBJ like, and then, then you have the vertical guys, Mike Williams, Allen Robinson. It's just like, I don't know, man. It's a, it just seems like the safest thing ever to draft a wide receiver these days. And that's what we saw in the first round uh, this year. Uh, Phoebe, also the NFL flag ambassador. Uh, you are a busy woman. And we thank you for taking the time. Best of luck with everything, including on the field. Uh, and we really enjoyed having you. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's been great to chat and compete. We'll see what social media really right. thinks. Right. I just realized <laughs> like that she's going to win. I just, knowing our uh, listeners, I just feel like... Um, 
they'll look past the superior team that I put together and they'll just like <laughs> want to be nice to a new guest, which I get. That's wow. <laughs> that, that, didn't see, that was a, a very Greg way to go out with our guest, but uh, <laughs> let, let the best person win, I say, Phoebe. I, I, agree. I agree. I agree. <laughs> All right, there she goes. Phoebe Schechter. Thanks, Phoebe. Follow her on Twitter and on Instagram. That's Phoebe underscore Schechter. Awesome guest. Um, Greg, I do feel a little, I feel a little guilty. Do you want to, do you want to get Godwin out of the mix? Is that what no, you're trying to say? No, no, no. I think we can put a little, you know, Graver can put a little asterisk. If you, if you listen to the show, which Ooh. is most, that's most important. Um, people will hear the context of it. And Chris, I love Chris Godwin. So I, yeah, so I don't want to be smart. Why do you want an asterisk? Why do you want the asterisk? Well, it's there? coming off a torn ACL. That's the only like thing. I'm sort of like throwing that at, out of the mix uh, here. All right. So head over to the ATN podcast uh, to uh, cast your vote on who has the best wide receiver room in this uh, weird universe where there's not really any other players or coaches or teams, but there are rooms of wide receivers. <laughs> I mean, it's a universe I'd like to live in. Um, I think it's going to get people angry. People are going to be mad that we didn't even mention certain guys or, you know, like people are going to be mad about certain picks. This is this is it. This is our recipe. The next <laughs> ten episodes, Dan, just drafting random rooms. <laughs> it felt like a uh, a nice opportunity for a mea culpa uh, for you to grab Hunter Renfro there. That would have been I. I for some reason had it in my head that you were gonna throw a category that was like undersized s- slot receivers with like lo- who are losing their hair, and you were just gonna like force me to. Damn it. That's a way better category uh, than the ones I came up with. Um, Hunter, I got you, though, buddy. You're having a great career. I'm All a right. huge fan. He, he would have been on my long list. I mean, that's the thing. You, would, you might have to get to 30 till you get to Renfro, and he's, the, he's a beast. That, that, I think you made the point, so I'll just kind of echo it, that it makes sense why, given the recent results, why these teams are more comfortable taking the first rounder or taking the quarterback or the wide receiver early in the first and even second round because just the odds are kind of playing in your favor that what you're seeing on tape um, either in the games or with the various uh, you know uh, measurables it will translate so it is the golden era the game has changed Um, okay we'll be back on Thursday I think Sessler's back on Thursday yeah he is good got Mark back uh, for a show with three of us in a while so that'll be nice we'll have some fun we are in the middle of the off season so um, thank you to everybody that is listening and has followed along All right, good stuff we'll see you on Thursday uh, and with Mark and all the gang thank you again to Phoebe Schechter until Thursday heed the call heed the call